In this video, we'll talk about and troubleshoot some Zscaler tunnel down situations. We'll list common reasons tunnels might go down, talk about how to define the troubleshooting scope, and we'll go through some of the most commonly seen cases from the field. Zscaler tunnels can be down for various reasons, including being administratively down, the related WAN interface is down or misconfigured, the next hop is unreachable, circuit failure, IPSLA marking the tunnel as down, configuration issues, and so on. Many of the failure reasons above are common to other tunnel types, such as simple pass-through tunnels. The first four are covered in the Troubleshooting Tunnel Down Part 2 pass-through video. For this video, we'll focus solely on IPSLA and configuration issues, as well as Zscaler-specific troubleshooting. It is assumed that you're familiar with the way BIOs work and the way internet flows are identified. If you'd like more detail on this, please review the Tunnel Down Part 2 video. If a Zscaler tunnel is down, we may be alerted to it by an alarm or perhaps users reporting internet access problems. Zscaler tunnels don't show us down with a critical alarm like an underlay or overlay does unless the tunnel has been set to admin down state. You'll see a warning alarm reported by the IPSLA monitoring service if the path through that tunnel is unusable. To define the troubleshooting scope, let's see how many IPSLAs are showing us down on monitoring alarms and how many appliances are reporting it. If all appliances are reporting the same problem, it could be an issue with the Zscaler subscription or configuration. If it's just one appliance, then it may be something more specific to that site. The information from monitoring alarms helps us understand the scope so we can focus our investigations accordingly. We can see that all appliances are reporting warnings. This suggests that we have a global issue, possibly something wrong with the configuration or subscription. We can hover over the source column of the alarm and see some detail about the ping attempt. Now let's check config IPSLA. Here we can see that only the Zscaler IPSLAs are showing an alarm. The other internet IPSLAs are still up. This confirms that basic connectivity is good and we have an issue specific to the Zscaler IPSLA. There are two possibilities. We may have an issue resolving the Zscaler IPSLA hostname or there is an error in that hostname. Since the other internet breakout IPSLAs are up, this doesn't mean DNS is good, because those IPSLOs also track two well-known public DNS servers by IP address. We can verify DNS resolution by pinging the Zscaler IPSLA destination in a CLI session. Since that worked, let's look more closely at our configuration. There is a mistake in the host name. Now we have corrected that. The IPSLA warnings have cleared for all appliances and internet flows are working again. As a side note, from Orchestrator 9.3 onwards, there is a new alarm that specifically fires if there is a DNS resolution failure of the IPSLA tracker. If the IPSLA hostname configuration is good, but the IPSLA alarms do not clear, we can confirm if the HTTP probes are being received by the appliance. To start with, let's confirm the Zscaler POP IP or IPs we are interested in from config tunnels pass through. We're interested in any tunnel that is in the up IPSLA disabled state. Having noted the POP IP, Let's go into the CLI and run a few commands. First, we'll go into enable mode. Then temporarily enable the tap interface using tunbug DT. Don't worry, this isn't service impacting and we'll disable it again once we've got some output. Using TCP dump, we'll capture the IPSLA HTTP probes. The IPsec underscore decrypt interface is the one we just enabled and the VV switch gives us more verbose output, allowing us to see inside the packets. We're looking for an OK in the response, 
and we can see that here. Let's finish up and disable the tap interface using Tunbug DD. If your tunnels are still not coming up, having verified the presence of the OK response from the Zscaler pop, please open a new case with TAC and send in a system dump from the appliance and also the TCP dump output. What if only one or a few sites are reporting internet access problems, but there are no alarms showing IP SLA problems, or indeed any alarms at all? Users behind appliance B1 are having trouble. Let's investigate. Our first port of call is to select B1 on the left and then examine the monitoring flows report to see what's going on. Straight away, we are met with a lot of red flows indicating that they have been policy dropped. If we examine the detail I button for one of those flows, we can see the reason is drop action hit in preferred policy order. This indicates that the flow was correctly matched to the breakout traffic to internet and cloud services section of the business intent overlay config. In there, Zscaler is first in the list, backhaul is second, followed by drop. So the fact we are seeing drop action hit in preferred policy order means the flow was unable to take a Zscaler tunnel and it was also unable to find a backhaul path either. Armed with this information, we can check our configuration. Working backwards, is our backhaul config right? There should be a default route advertised from one or more hub appliances. Config routes will tell us if we have that. We can see two default routes, but these are the WAN0 and WAN interface next hop routes, which cannot be used for backhaul. Let's add the advertise only route on the DC appliance. It's referred to as advertise only because there is no next hop configured. That change has restored internet access via backhaul. But what about the Zscaler policy? Since we know other sites Zscaler access is working just fine, we can deduce that the configuration globally is good. If we check config IP SLA on B1, we don't see any IP SLA rules here. Let's now check config tunnels pass through and see if the tunnels are present. They are missing two. This suggests that B1 hasn't been associated with the Zscaler service. Let's go to config Zscaler internet access and confirm. In fact, this page is a great place to check the overall status of your Zscaler deployment. Here we can see at a glance the tunnel status, deployment status, and labels used. Ensuring that we have no appliances ticked on the left, we can see that B1 isn't in this list, which confirms that the association is missing. Clicking on Zscaler association also shows it is missing. Let's cancel that, select B1 on the left, and go back into Zscaler association and tick the add box. Note that this change may take a few minutes to complete. After resetting the flows, they are now taking the Zscaler tunnel as defined in the preferred policy order. Lastly, let's talk about what to do if there are no problems with IPSLA or anything obviously wrong in the configuration, but tunnels aren't coming up or even being created at some sites. Well, it's difficult to make a comprehensive guide for all possible scenarios, so this is where our TAC team can help you. One of the things you can do ahead of opening a new case is to examine the orchestrator audit logs and see if you can spot any failed entries in red, especially if they are repeating over and over. Don't worry if you aren't able to spot anything obvious. Take a look at the case opening guidelines video for assistance with opening a case, and if you can, export those audit logs and upload them to your case. Also check tunnel settings and verify Ike v2 is being used. This mode is the best choice to ensure dead peer detection works reliably and that Ike negotiations are always successful. To wrap up, the troubleshooting checklist is check monitoring alarms to determine the scope of the issue, check orchestrator audit logs for failed messages in red, examine monitoring flows and the detail I pop up 
to see how the problem flows are being handled. Verify no interfaces or tunnels are set to admin down. Confirm basic connectivity to the internet, either by manually pinging from the relevant WAN interface, or the IPSLA, if correctly configured, will do this for you. Check the Zscaler subscription has been configured as per the Orchestrator user guide. Verify Zscaler has been associated with appliances. Check Zscaler has been configured on at least one overlay in the correct place in the preferred policy order. Confirm IPSLA is enabled and able to resolve the Zscaler portal destination. Check tunnel settings and verify IKE v2 is set. Verify IPSLA is not marking the pass through tunnel as up IPSLA disabled. And that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>